Let's go over the ray tracing rules for converging lenses. When it comes to a converging lens, there are three cases that you need to know and for which you need to be able to do ray tracing. Either the object distance is greater than two focal lengths, or it's smaller than 2f but still greater than f, or it's smaller than f. And we're going to go over the ray tracing rules for each one of these cases. Take this one to begin. There are three rules for ray tracing, and that has nothing to do with the fact that there are also three cases. It's simply for a given lens, converging or diverging, there are three rules. Usually if you apply only two of them, you can find where the image forms, but we're going to go over all three of them. Take your object AB here, that is a distance S greater than two focal lengths away from the lens, and it's a converging lens. Light will be coming from the object, so this is incoming light, therefore this is the front of the lens with F1, this is the back of the lens with F2. And of course that's flipped if now the object's on the other side, obviously. But F1 and F2 have different properties and it's important to keep track of them. The first rule is that any ray of light that comes in parallel to the axis hits the lens and emerges through F2. So you line it up with F2, goes through the lens, and there you go. So that's the first rule. The second rule, which might be in fact the simplest rule, is that any ray coming from B and going through the center of the lens is not deflected. So we could draw this ray of light like this. And I know that images form where emerging rays intersect or appear to intersect. They actually intersect here. So I already know that my image is going to form there and will be downward. So it will be inverted compared to my object. There's a last rule, and we'll just go over that one before we draw the position of the image. And that one says that any ray of light that comes in through F1, like this, comes out parallel to the axis. And therefore, you get this. And of course, everything converges at this point because we assume that we have perfect lenses and that the image of a point is a point. There's no distortion or anything like that. Therefore, A prime, B prime is right here. It is a reduced image, an inverted image, and a real image because light actually converges at this point. But note that just with ray tracing, we could conclude that, which means that ray tracing is incredibly powerful. It tells you that the image is smaller, inverted, and real. And you didn't have to do any calculations or use any equations. So you need to know these three rules for ray tracing. And we're now going to apply them to this case and see how they work, and then finally do that one. So the first rule is that any ray of light coming from B and that is parallel to the optical axis comes out through F2. So we have incoming light like this comes out through F2, like that. Then the second rule tells you that light that goes through the center of the lens is not deflected. So let's try to do this carefully. Here, we have light going through the center of the lens, and that light is not deflected. And I really should have made my first ray a bit longer because I know that images form where emerging rays intersect or appear to intersect, and it looks like they're going to intersect down here somewhere. So let me just do that right now and make my red ray 
possibly even my second one too, a bit longer. And I'll have to adjust the second one as well. But again, if you're very precise with your construction, and I would encourage you to use a ruler, though you, you could probably get away with not using one and still get pretty accurate results. If you do it with a ruler, then it's, it's incredibly precise. Here we find an intersection here, and that, of course, is going to make the last rule a bit strange because we don't quite have what is required here to really draw it nicely. We said that any ray of light that goes through F1 and hits the lens comes out parallel. That's going to come out parallel and converge to this point. The problem is we didn't really draw the lens tall enough, so we'll just have to be careful and sort of extrapolate and say that, well, in reality, the lens is probably big enough so that you would have something like this. It would, you know, hit, hit the lens down here, and it would come out parallel to the optical axis, and you would find an image that forms over here. And this time your image is inverted, but it's enlarged, and it's still real because light actually converges at this point. And you could draw A prime, B prime, just like this. This would be A prime, B prime. And you have an enlarged, inverted real image. And therefore, these two cases are very similar. The only difference is here you get a smaller image, here you get a bigger one because the object is closer. However, if you come too close, then you're in this situation, and we'll see that things change a little bit. Of course, the rules don't, but the way you do ray tracing might seem a bit strange because this time we need to have a look at the emerging rays and where they appear to intersect. So let's just draw the rays following the rules. The ray that's parallel to the axis emerges through the focal point F2. And then the ray that is going through the center of the lens is not deflected. And already we see that it looks like these rays are not going to intersect on this side of the lens. But if we make them longer on this side, they will appear to come from a point up here. So I'm going to just make these two guys a bit longer, and I'll use dotted lines, because light doesn't actually come from the point up here. It looks like it does, but it doesn't really. And this is where the emerging rays appear to intersect. And so to me, because my brain thinks that light travels in a straight line, I think that the image formed out here. And let's just do the last ray to see that it also works, although it's, again, a little strange. Uh, because we said that the ray of light that goes through F1, hits the lens, comes out parallel. Well, here, you can't go through F1. I mean, light goes toward the lens. It doesn't turn around, go through F1, and then bounce back or something weird. But you could draw the ray that is aligned with F1. It doesn't really start here. It starts at point B, but it's aligned with F1, and therefore has the right angle when it hits the lens to come out and be parallel. Now, the problem is, if you're not super accurate with your drawing, it's not going to work so nicely. See, my, my ray, I'm going to have it come out parallel, and that's fine, but it doesn't exactly converge to this point. It's kind of a stretch, but I'm not using the best tools to do a very accurate job. That said, if you do do this on engineering paper and you use a ruler and you're very precise, you'll see that they all converge to this point, or appear to come from this point. And therefore, this is B prime, 
and we find point A on the axis just by drawing a vertical line like this. And we can conclude that we get an image that is upright, enlarged, however virtual, because light doesn't actually go to this point here. It doesn't actually converge here. It appears to converge here. If my eye sees rays of light like this, it assumes that they all came from this point. And that means that this image is virtual. And this is point A prime, sorry. So these are the three cases that you need to know. Note that in this one, it's the only case that you get an upright image. And that's interesting because this is in fact a magnifying glass. If you have a converging lens and you bring it close enough to the object that you're trying to look at, you'll have an image that is upright, which is convenient for reading, and enlarged. So that's nice. And this is typically a magnifying glass. And we can come back to that in problems.